Well, good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. Your one stop for days the biggest news stories that you might have missed during the night. I am Ashwarya Kapoor and here are this morning's headlines. The Netherlands uh, backs India's early entry into the NSG and bid for UNSC seat. Decision on granting 5-year business and tourist visa to Dutch passport holders soon. Last day for filing nomination papers for presidential polls, Mira Kumar to file papers. Fourth set of papers to be filed on Ram Nath Kovin's behalf. Annual Amarnath Yatra in Kashmir begins. An alert issued after intelligence warning of a possible terror attack. Heavy rains in Mumbai and Konkan region. A monsoon advances into Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. Floods affect over 1 lakh people in Assam. And yet another major ransomware cyber attack. Major global firms targeted. Fresh wave of attack after Warner Cry in May this year. Top story this morning, the Netherlands has backed India's early entry into the NSG and other multilateral export control regimes. It has also supported India's bid for a permanent UN Security Council seat. Now, the Netherlands' support came after Prime Minister Nareen Modi held a talks with his Dutch counterpart Mark Rutte at The Hague. Before wrapping up his visit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that India will soon take a decision on granting five-year business and tourist visa to Dutch passport holders. He said this while addressing the Indian diaspora. In his hour-long speech, Prime Minister Modi mostly focused on his government's efforts aimed at women's empowerment as he talked about the endeavour to ensure progress and modernisation of India. हमारी सरकार ने 50 प्रतिशत जो जनसंख्या है उसको भारत की विकास यात्रा का एक प्रमुख हिस्सा बनाने की दिशा में बिड़ा उठाया है एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ विमेन और इतना ही नहीं Women led development. Sir, development se aspirations pure nahi hote hain. Sir, good governance se bhi nahi hote hain. Development and good governance dono ka combination hota hai. Tab jan samanya ko samadhan hota hai. And earlier, India and the Netherlands on Tuesday signed three MOUs on water management, a cultural cooperation, and amending a social security arrangements. The MOUs were signed in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Dutch counterpart Mark Root in Amsterdam. Both the leaders also reaffirmed their country's commitment towards the Paris climate deal. On the final leg of his three-nation tour, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held talks with his Dutch counterpart Mark Rutte at Kutschers in The Hague. Both leaders deliberated on a series of bilateral and international issues. Hailing India's economic reforms, Dutch Prime Minister Rutte called India a global economic power. When it comes to the economy, India's onward development is opening new doors to trade and investments in both our countries. India is now a global economic power. It's the world's 12th biggest economy and has a population of more than 1.2 billion. So the Indian market has a lot of potential. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lauded the Netherlands for helping India successfully get a membership of the missile technology control regime. He also called the Netherlands a natural partner in India's road to development. Bharat and Netherlands are old for years. And this is always a strong way to progress. द्विपक्षीय इन्वेस्टमेंट संबंधों की बात करें तो आज तक कुल मिलाकर नेदरलैंड्स हमारा फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट सोर्स ऑफ फॉरेन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट है इनफैक्ट पिछले तीन वर्षों में 
नेदरलैंड हमारा थर्ड लार्जेस्ट सोर्स ऑफ फॉरेन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट बन करके उभरा है The Netherlands is India's sixth largest trading partner in the European Union and a major investor in Indian sectors of technology, energy, logistics, financial services and transport. Trade between the two countries has continued to grow steadily and stood at 9 billion dollars in 2014-2015 with positive balance of trade in India's favor. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And with India and the U.S. Uh, pledging uh, to deepen their defense and security cooperation, America has cleared the sale of uh, Predator Guardian drones into India. The sale uh, builds on the U.S.'s recognition of India as a major defense partner. The Sea Guardian uh, unmanned aerial systems will enhance India's capabilities and promote a shared security interest. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and U.S. President Donald Trump have struck a common note on terrorism as uh, they met for the first time uh, in the White House on Monday. The two leaders uh, vowed to fight against terrorism, saying it was the topmost priority. Both the countries also reviewed their bilateral relations and affirmed their commitment to take the partnership to new heights. Prime Minister Narendra Modi met US President Donald Trump at the White House on Monday in the first face-to-face -face meeting between the two leaders. Prime Minister expressed gratitude for the warm welcome extended to him and said he was deeply touched with the grand welcome he and his delegation received during this trip. Sir, this particular me and my delegation ka भव्य स्वागत किया है सम्मान किया है ये सवा सौ करोड़ देशवासियों का सम्मान है मैं इसके लिए राष्ट्रपति जी का और फर्स्ट लेडी का हृदय से आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ इट्स अ ग्रेट ऑनर टू हैव प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ऑफ इंडिया हु हैज बीन सच अ ग्रेट प्राइम मिनिस्टर आई बीन स्पीकिंग विद हिम एंड रीडिंग अबाउट यू एंड यू हैव डन ए ग्रेट जॉब The two leaders held delegation level talks and affirmed their commitment to bolster the US India strategic partnership. Both the countries struck a common note on terrorism and agreed to enhance cooperation in fighting the menace of terrorism, extremism and radicalization. The two leaders also sent out a strong message to Pakistan asking it to ensure that its territory was not used to launch cross border terror strikes. Charcha ki तथा इसमें अपने सहयोग को बढ़ाने पर भी सहमति बनाई आतंकवाद से लड़ना और आतंकवादियों को सुरक्षित पनागाहों को समाप्त करना हमारी सहभागिता का एक महत्वपूर्ण भाग होगा Minister Briefing the media after talks US President Donald Trump said the relationship between the two countries had never been stronger and better Trump also said he was keen to work with Modi on creating a fair and reciprocal trading relationship between the two nations. He also called for a removal of barriers for the exports of US goods into Indian markets. The relationship between India and the United States has never been stronger, has never been better. I am proud to announce to the media, to the American people and to the Indian people that prime minister and i are world leaders in social media we're believers giving the citizens of our countries the opportunity to hear directly from their elected officials and for us to hear directly from them i guess it's worked very well in both cases earlier in the day The Prime Minister also met US Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis and US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. Prime Minister held an extensive discussion on counterterrorism with Mattis during their meeting. They also discussed the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, there was discussion on counterterrorism, cooperation in counterterrorism again. Uh, in fact, first because Secretary Mattis's meeting was the first and uh, there was a uh, discussion also on the situation in afghanistan and uh, uh, the conversation briefly touched upon uh, how the situation can evolve and what the two countries can do together
Later in the day, President Trump hosted a dinner in honor of Prime Minister Modi. Modi, who was visiting U.S. for the fifth time in three years, extended a warm invitation to President Trump and his family to visit India. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. On to some other news now. The filing of nominations for the 17th of July presidential election ends today with the 64 papers including those of NDA candidate Ram Nath Kovind are being filed so far. Those 64 papers have been filed so far. The number of actual candidates is much less at 57 as some of them have filed multiple nominations. One candidate can file a maximum of four nominations. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and BJP veterans L.K. Advani and Murli Manohar Joshi were the prominent leaders who had proposed a former Bihar governor Kovin's name in the nomination papers. Several union ministers and MLAs had seconded the proposal on 23rd of June. Union Minister Venkaya Naidu will file the fourth set of nomination papers on Kovin's behalf today. The elected members of the Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and the State Legislative Assemblies uh, can propose and second a candidate as uh, they are the ones who elect the president through the system of proportional representation. Meanwhile, uh, Ramnath Kovind uh, will meet Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehbubam Mufti in Srinagar today to seek the support of uh, lawmakers from the state uh, for the 17th of July election. Now, Mehbuba Mufti, who was not present when Kovind filed his nomination papers, will convene a meeting of MPs and MLAs from her state at her residence, which will be addressed by Kovind. Her party, the PDP, has assured the BJP of its support. Now, Kovind will be accompanied by Union Minister M. Venkaya Naidu and the party's the General Secretary, Ram Madhav. The ex Rajya Sabha member will meet uh, NDA MPs and MLAs from Haryana and Punjab in Panchkula, Haryana on a Thursday as well. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and BJP's uh, General Secretary Anil Jain will also be among the leaders who will be with Kovind in Haryana. Later this week, uh, Kovind will also visit uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, Kerala and Puducherry. So far, 28 uh, parties have extended their support to the NDA's presidential candidate. An opposition uh, presidential nominee Meera Kumar will file her nomination papers today. Now she will file the papers in the presence of Congress President Sonia Gandhi and a number of opposition leaders. Now Meera Kumar will file a set of four nomination papers which will be proposed and seconded by leaders of a number of other opposition parties. She will file her papers at 11.30 a.m. in Parliament today before the Secretary General, the returning officer for the presidential election. Leaders of a number of opposition parties, including CPIM's Sidhar Amir Churi and the TMC's Derek O'Brien and other leaders representing opposition parties like the DMK, SP, BSP, RJD and JMM will also accompany her during her nomination filing. 17 political parties have selected her as their presidential candidate against NDA's Ram Nath Kovind. Counting of votes after the presidential polls will take place on 20th of July. Remember, President Pranam Mukherjee will demit office on 24th of July. And earlier, Meera Kumar, the opposition's uh, presidential candidate on Tuesday, said that the upcoming presidential election is not a fight of castes, but ideology. Now, Kumar addressed a press conference in the national capital a day before filing of her nomination uh, for the elections. Now, two days ago, Kumar had also written letters to all the members of Collegium requesting them for their support. Opposition presidential nominee Meera Kumar on Tuesday said there is a need to remove the caste structure and caste-based politics. A case in point, she said, is the upcoming presidential election, which shouldn't be seen as a Dalit versus Dalit contest. <laughs> Meera Kumar said her electoral plank will be democratic values, inclusiveness and social justice. 
the former lok sabha speaker also revealed that she will launch her campaign from sabarmati ashram in gujarat social justice freedom of press transparency end of poverty destruction of caste structure are some of those cherished values which form important component of this ideology this ideology is very close to my heart for this very reason in the coming election this will be the plank on which i will contest meera kumar will face the nda's presidential candidate ramnath kovind both kumar and kovind are dalit leaders while kumar was the first woman speaker of the lok sabha Kovind resigned as governor of Bihar earlier this month. She will file her nomination papers on Wednesday after being selected as the presidential candidate unanimously by 17 major political opposition parties. The election will be held on July 17th and counting of votes will be on July 20th. Pranav Goswami's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And we are slipping into a very short break here. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Pipravā in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome back. Now, a mega rehearsal has been planned for tonight in the Central Hall of Parliament ahead of the historic GST launch on the midnight of 30th of June. Now, as per the official sources, the rehearsal uh, scheduled to be held at uh, 10 p.m. may be supervised by either Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar, his uh, deputies Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi and SS Aluwalia, or Secretary Rajiv Yadav. Now, officers concerned from various departments, including those from the Finance Ministry, will be part of the rehearsal event. Now, the purpose of the rehearsal is to ensure that everything is well organized and there is the smooth conduct of the launch event. The final event is uh, likely to start at 11 p.m. on 30th of June and will be on till half past midnight. Meanwhile, a suspense continues over the participation of the Congress party in the 30th of June midnight meeting. The party is likely to decide on the issue today. The Congress leaders are reportedly divided on the issue as a group within feels that the GST was the party's brainchild which has now been taken over by the ruling BJP. However, some leaders feel that the GST is being implemented in haste and all aspects have not been taken into consideration. On to some other news, China on Tuesday accused Indian troops of crossing the boundary in the Sikkim region and demanded their immediate withdrawal. The statement came after Defence uh, Ministry of China accused the Indian troops of objecting to a road construction in what it claimed to be Chinese territory. Now, Beijing justified the construction of a, the road in uh, the Sikkim sector, saying that the area was located on its side of the border as per the 1890 Sino-British Treaty, which was recognized by both the countries. Now, China also lodged a diplomatic protest with India, both in New Delhi and Beijing, over the alleged uh, trespassing and demanded a thorough investigation. On Monday night, China refused the entry of uh, Indian pilgrims who entered Tibet via the Nathula Pass, uh, citing border standoff as the reason. China中方在北京和新德里都已经向印度方面提出了严正的交涉，表明了我们的严正的立场。我在这必须强调，中方对发展中印友好关系是有诚意的。now an update on the situation in Darjeeling. Uh, paramilitary forces have stepped up patrolling and have taken positions in sensitive pockets as the GJM-sponsored indefinite uh, shutdown entered its uh, third week. On Tuesday, the GJM supporters intensified protests, burning copies of the GTA Accord at uh, several places in the Hill region. 
The supporters also returned to, to violence after days of calm as they targeted the house of the chairman of a development board in Kalimpong district. The shops remain closed and internet services also remain suspended in the region. The activists have threatened to commit self-immolation and launch a fast unto death if their demand for a separate state of Gorkhaland is not heeded by the centre. However, the BJP has said that it does not support its ally JJM's demand but has called for addressing the region's cultural and political concerns. Now, BJP has blamed the state's government for triggering a crisis by undermining the Gorkha Territorial Administration or the GTA. News from the northeast of the country and the flood situation in Assam remains unchanged with more than 1 lakh people affected in eight districts of the state. Now, according to Assam State Disaster Management Authority report, the flooded districts are Lakhimpur, Karim Ganj, Jorhat, Karbi, Anglong, Hojai, Golaghat, Sivasagar and Sonitpur districts, overrunning 150 villages in nine revenue circles. As per the report, five rivers are flowing above the danger mark. Due to heavy rains, waterlogging has been reported from several areas. Altogether, 1,380 hectares of cropland has been submerged by the flood, with the worst hit being the Lakhimpur district. Meanwhile, heavy rains also lashed Mumbai and other parts of Maharashtra on Tuesday, leading to flooding in several cities, including Nagpur. Mumbai recorded 10.2 millimeters of rain and the suburb saw 15.4 millimeters in just eight hours. Waterlogging was reported at 10 locations in Mumbai. The trains have been the worst hit, with the several of them being delayed owing to flooded tracks. However, tourists and locals displayed grit and enjoyed the high tidal waves which lashed most of the seafront areas like Gateway of India, Kolaba, Nariman Point and Chopati, among others. बरसात शुरू हो गई है अच्छा लग रहा है रिमझिम पानी है बारिश का मौजूद है पकोड़े का मजा लें आनंद करें और क्या? And the first batch of over 4,000 pilgrims for this year's Amar Nath Yatra has been flagged off from Jammu today. Amid tight security arrangements, Jammu and Kashmir Deputy Chief Minister Nirmal Singh flagged off the Yatra from a Bhagwati Nagar base camp this morning. Now speaking on the occasion, he said that uh, foolproof uh, security arrangements have been made for the smooth conduct of the Yatra. Now, according to an intelligence warning, the Yatra, which begins today, is facing a terror threat. Over 2.3 lakh pilgrims have registered for the Yatra. The government has mobilized a heavy security blanket of over 35,000 to 40,000 troops, including the police, the army, the BSF and the CRPF. Now, satellites and drones would also monitor this year's Yatra. जम्मू कश्मीर सरकार की ओर से बहुत अच्छे प्रबंध किए गए हैं जो श्राइन बोर्ड है उसने बड़े अच्छे प्रबंध किए हैं लोगों के यहां आने का रहने का हर प्रकार के उनके खाने का और सुरक्षा का प्रबंध बड़े पुख्ता है हजारों की तैदात में सुरक्षा कर्मी इसके लिए लगाए हुए हैं जिसमें हमारी सेना है सुरक्षा बल है हमारी पुलिस जम्मू कश्मीर की पुलिस है सारे डिपार्टमेंट से इसमें लगे हुए हैं और इस पर अच्छे प्रबंध है बहुत on to some international news now, when companies across the globe are reporting have been struck by a major ransomware cyber attack. Now, hackers launched a blistering ransomware attacks against companies and agencies across the world, particularly targeting Ukrainian businesses. Major global firms reported that they had been targeted, including British advertising agency WPP, 
Russian oil and gas giant uh, Rosneft and a Danish uh, shipping uh, firm Marsuk. Now, the Chernobyl uh, nuclear power plant has also had to monitor radiation levels manually after its uh, window-based uh, sensors were shut down. Now, this virus uh, freezes the user's computer until a ransom is paid. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security advised victims not to pay the ransom, saying that there was no guarantee that access to files would be restored. But the source of the attack is not yet clear. It is similar to WannaCry, which spread globally in the month of May, but there are differences as well. Now, many firms have suggested that the ransomware is a variant of uh, Petya, a known ransomware. The International Police Organization, Interpol, has said that it was closely monitoring the situation. There are likely close to 2,000 attacks so far due to the recent ransomware attack, mostly in uh, Ukraine, Russia and Poland. По всій країні багато підприємств, як державного, так і приватного сектору, сьогодні практично в один той самий час були уражені вірусом, дуже подібним до вірусу вона край, який блокує файли на комп'ютерах. Але енергосистема працює в порядку, ми зараз з вами на диспетчерському щиті. It looks horribly like it, it might be using something very similar to the WannaCry um, ransomware that we saw. So this isn't people clicking on a link in, a, in an email and getting their computers infected. This looks like there's some automated mechanism spreading this. Um, it, it's, it, it, there's two possible mechanisms it seems to be narrowed down to at the moment, but it's, it's spreading extremely fast. Now, the European Union has handed Google a record-breaking $2.7 billion fine, the biggest fine imposed by Europe on any company ever. The EU excess accuses the search engine for illegally favoring its own shopping service as customers used Google to search for products online. The European regulator said that uh, by artificially and illegally promoting its own price comparison service in searches, Google denied both its consumers a real choice and rival firms the ability to compete on a level playing field. The Silicon Valley giant has now 90 days to stop its illegal activities and explain how it will reform its ways. The EU regulator is further investigating how else the company may have abused its position. Now, Google has disputed the EU's findings and said that it is considering an appeal. Today, the Commission has decided uh, to fine Google uh, 2.4 billion euros for breaching EU antitrust rules. Google has abused its market dominance as a search engine by giving illegal advantages to another Google product, its shopping comparison service. Google must end this conduct within 90 days or face penalty payments. On to sports now, and former Indian cricketer Ravi Shastri has decided to apply for the position of Indian team's head coach. Shastri was the director of the team between 2014 and 2016. He had also applied for the job last year, losing out to Kumble in the end. Now, Anil Kumble, remember, resigned as the coach of the Indian cricket team last week. Now, Shastri's decision follows BCCI's decision not to renew his one-year contract and invite fresh applications for the top post. And India's top singles the tennis player Ramkumar Ramanathan recorded the biggest win of his singles career as he stunned world number eight Dominic Thaim in the pre quarterfinals of uh, the Antalya Open. The world number 222 Ramanathan, who entered the tournament through the qualifiers, dominated the match against uh, the tournament top seed Thaim, ultimately winning 6 2, 6 3 in under an hour. This was Ramanathan's first ever victory over a top 10 player in the ATP rankings. He will next face a veteran Cyprus star Marcos Bagdatis in the quarter final. That's all in this edition of news. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.